Hi, my name is Roy Collin and welcome to the show. I've also got five podcasts, The Awakening Podcast, Exposing Fraud and Corruption but with Solutions, The Crypto Podcast, Talking About All Things Blockchain, NFTs, Crypto, The Meditation Podcast, Talking About All Different Types of Meditation, but there's also meditations there from one minute to two hours. And the other one is the Learn Polish Podcast, so if you're interested in learning Polish, you can do that. And the other one is speaking with Roy Collin, and I just have guests from around the world talking about either public speaking or also about their book or just general life in general. And you'll find everything on bio.link forward slash podcaster. I'm also a podcasting coach. And you see the QR code there, and it's also on my link as well. And if you're interested in actually going on some podcast shows, I'm helping people doing that. Or if you're interested in sponsorship, you can contact me. And I'd like to thank my sponsor, DanielPacker.com. He helps people with anxiety, stress, and addictions. He's got a 90% success rate, and you only pay if you're successful. So be sure to check him out, DanielPacker.com. I hope you enjoy this week's show. Welcome to the Speaking Podcast. You can find all our episodes on speakingpodcast.com. I guess today, Dadpreneur. I love that. I actually hadn't come across that before. Dadpreneur. I thought, ooh, I, I really like that. He's an author. He's a coach. He's a noose podcaster, which we'll talk about as well. But he's also a TEDx speaker. Please welcome Dai Manuel. Manuel. You nailed it. Nailed it. Roy, so good to be here, man. And uh appreciate the, just the opportunity to connect with you and also just learn about you. I mean, I had... Uh, to be fair, I, I mean, I would never ever think to want to learn Polish, okay? <laughs> so so I don't think that ever would have been one of the podcasts I would have discovered about you, but to learn about all the other ones that you put out, holy smokes, I can't wait to go back to, to my Spotify and start creeping on you more. <laughs> it's really inspiring. No, really it is. It is. So it's great to be here today. No, thank you very much. So I... I've just kind of mentioned the bullet points, but you might kind of, because you've done a lot, you've you've kind of done incredible things with business and everything. You might just let the listeners know a little bit more about you. Well, it, it, you know, I'm I'm almost 47, actually. Uh, and, you know, by the time this episode obviously airs, I'll be 47. And uh, in 47 years, I, I've made a lot of mistakes and I've learned from them. Um, and I know I'll make a lot more <laughs> and hopefully I can keep learning. But um, I didn't come to business naturally. It sort of fell into it. Um, not, bo- not necessarily out of necessity, but out of inspiration. You know, I, I grew up watching my parents, uh, professionals, uh, but my mom always had a side hustle. So that entrepreneurial spirit was definitely modeled for me as I was growing up. And, uh, as I got into my twenties, young personal trainer, I realized, holy smokes, I'm kind of capped here. You know, unless I open up a gym, hire a team of trainers, go down that route, maybe become a lawyer, maybe become a teacher, you know, but all these things are really capped, you know, income wise, because it's really just time for dollars. And uh, so then that's when I really embraced the idea of, of entrepreneurship and, and doing my own thing. And fortunately for me, I had a great mentor, uh, someone that was 20 years my senior, saw something in me that I didn't quite see in myself yet. And uh, for 17 years, you know, from my early 20s until my late 30s, I, I, helped scale a company, you know, from startup to, to 10 figures a year. And yeah, sorry, not 10 figures a year, eight figures a year. Um, for those know, that wouldn't know, that's like yeah. uh, 10, it's about million 10 million, plus. it's about 10 million plus. And um, that was retail as well as commercial. So B2B and, and uh, some manufacturing, but all in the fitness and health space, you know, we're really selling just the toys that helped me with my transformation when I was a kid, you know, I went from morbidly obese to to healthy individual. And, and that took some time and effort and energy and definitely a lot of discipline. Um, but it inspired me and I knew I wanted to, to be able to help others with that. And uh, fast forward to now, you know, from late thirties to, to sort of my late forties, um, after I exited out of the last business, I, I, I felt this need, you know, cause I went through my own personal transformation as well in my early thirties, like a lot of us men do, you know, sort of that, that between 30 to forties, there's a lot of self-discovery going on. Or we tend to ignore some of those urges. <laughs> and and uh, for me, I, I wanted to acknowledge them. And uh, and so I leaned in and went a completely different route and really went back to my roots with coaching again. And, and, and then also during that time, I really developed this passion for speaking and connecting with audiences. Uh, like yourself, Toastmasters was a big part of that journey as well. And, um, you know, fast forward now, I, I, I help people with change. You know, and I'm a partner in a couple startups as well. So trying to navigate that space, which is 
uh, tumultuous at best, but you know, it's a learning, it's fun. And uh, I'm on a team again with people that I, that I like to hang out with. So that makes it a lot of, uh, very enjoyable. And my kids are off to school now. So I'm an empty nester off to university. And so here I do, I find myself with time and I'm like, what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to start a podcast because there's a guy named Roy out there that's got like a bajillion of them. 1200 plus episodes i think i can start one and uh and so that's the sort of next foray for me and then the next few months is really going down that path but uh other than that man and i just trying to live my best life you know like every one of us are love it love it so <laughs> i seen the picture you were 14 you were saying you were obese oh yeah i know yeah. a lot of people that kind of they could be in that situation or their children could be in that situation yeah what mindset, what what could you kind of help people when they're struggling? Mm -hmm. Because they kind of, they comfort eat, they get the breath, they go tired, you know, get tired, go mm -hmm. to sleep and stuff like that. How can they overcome that kind of hurdle? Oh, good question, Ryan. Well, well, you know, change is an interesting subject just in itself, right? Most of us are rather change averse. We, we try to avoid change. I mean, it's, I mean, how often is change easy? You know, making change, not so hard. <laughs> you know, changing our pants. Again, not so hard, um, but changing habits, eh, not as easy, you know, and especially the longer we've had certain habits, the harder it is to create new ones to override those old ones. And, you know, I think back to where I was, a lot of it was emotional based, you know, it was me looking to self-medicate. And what I mean by that is I was trying to avoid a lot of those inner emotions that I just didn't know how to handle. And I was under-resourced. My parents were doing their best. They were both very busy with their careers. So I had a lot of time by myself and I learned early on, you know, food. Wow. And I'm not talking like, Hey, Roy, more salad, please. You know, I was like, yeah, no, I'll take more buns. I'll have more dessert. Like I was going for foods that gave me this instant energy kick, made me feel better in the moment, as well as I would do things that were rather passive yet gave me those dopamine hits like video game playing, TV watching. Right. And, and this is before social media being a kid of the eighties. Um, so I I'm grateful because I don't know, if I had to do it all over again today with all the distractions today, I know it'd be much harder. And that's why I really feel for kids today. You know, kids are dealing with this struggle. I saw my own kids deal with their electronics issues, you know, screen issues. And so the biggest thing I can offer to people is, you know, if you see a young child and, and they're really, you can tell when they're hurting. Now you can tell like pain is fairly evident. It, it's, it's, I mean, people shut down, they get really quiet. They become quite introverted. They start to isolate. I mean, there's signs there and often they're just looking for someone to reach out and say, you know what, it's going to be okay. You're safe. You're okay. Can I help you? You know, or I'm here to support you, but still that individual has to be in a space where they're wanting to make a change. Because I don't know yourself, Roy, but I know myself, there's been people that have seen me do some things in my life, you know, my 20s, my early 30s, I, I struggled with alcohol, uh, alcohol consumption, which often would lead to other things that I'm not proud of doing. Um, and I know how hard it can be when we have certain vices to, to, to break away from those vices. And, and often people will see us happening and they'll come to us, those loved ones, right? And they'll make suggestions, like they want to help us, they want to see us change, because they care about us. And I remember getting very antagonistic, rather bombastic at times when I would even have my spouse, my partner in my life. I've been dating my wife for 23 years, but I remember her coming to me, talking about the alcohol, wanting to have a conversation about it and me just exploding, you know, getting really verbally angry, storming out of the house, you know, because I wasn't ready to make a change yet. And, and so I'll leave it at this is if there's anybody out there that's feeling like, hey, you know, it hurts more to stay as I am than to potentially do the thing that I don't know how to do. That's very intimidating, right? If it hurts more not to change than to change, that's usually when people are ready to change, you know, at least from my experience. And that's what's happened for me many times in my life. I had to get really honest with myself and like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this all to myself, you know? And, uh, but there are a few questions that I ask people to ask themselves if they're starting to feel that way starting to feel frustrated with their own position in life, frustrated every time they look in the mirror, right? Frustrated every time they get up in the morning and they think, gosh, I got to do this all over again. There's just a few questions because it can always get better. And uh, we can dive into those in a little bit, but uh, you know, just make sure before we leave today, I, I'm going to share those questions, okay? Because there are three questions and I honestly feel that they'll help people get started with change and it makes change 
well, it empowers us to to lean in to change a little bit more positively, you know. Um, but it's not a journey that we want to take alone. I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. And like you mentioned about computer games when you were young, not sure were you yeah. playing with the Commodore 64 or the Amiga yeah. or the Spectrum? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we actually had a Commodore 128. <laughs> okay. Were they the cassette so, ones as well that you had to wait about 10 minutes for the game to, to, uh, to load? Big floppies, big floppies. And I remember sometimes you'd have to change floppies because it'd be a really big game. It's like, oh, put yeah. in disc two now. <laughs> and sometimes it would cut out. It wouldn't work. And you're like, oh my gosh, I, I just, I didn't save it, you know? And anyways, it's a uh... <laughs> first world problems <laughs> so it's like i know that at, i don't know it was like 13 or whatever but like yeah, the games yeah. got big into the games just have to have more games more games yeah. more games but i got out of it but the people that i was doing it they never did this just one of them he was get the was it the playstation or whatever when it was yes. he'd buy it from japan so that he'd get it before it come to europe he was that wow. and so he's still into like i just got away from it but i think it's something to be aware of as well because you know it's easy to go down the rabbit hole with with yeah. technology it, it is and i think it's just a matter of it, again we, we hear this term balance and i think balance well it, it can be a demotivator at times um because i think we hear it so often it's, it's become a cliche now right it's like well, work-life balance <laughs> like what the hell does that mean you know i like guess i feel like it's a place off of never never land right I, I never seem to find it but i'm looking for it and i want it because everyone that seems to have it it seems like everything's great and when i gave up searching for work-life balance but rather started to look on how can i harmonize my work and my life you know how do i make them more synergistic how do i make them complement each other much more like like you're trying to you know i'm mean, i'm not a composer by any means please believe me <laughs> but i look at what composers are able to do and how they can put all these different sounds together to make a harmony to make something beautiful and i think our lives can be very much the same but we are the orchestra uh, as well as the composer <laughs> right and and uh and i think it's just taking that self uh, reliance position that I can do this. I just might need some help to do it. Right. But when we create the harmony, I, I find it's, it's, for me, it's easier to maintain, you know, cause I, I have some filters. Now I pass things through before I say yes, but it also allows me to say no much, much quicker. And, and I think that's a big problem for a lot of us today. Like, I mean, come on, the fear of missing out is real. You know, it's like another opportunity, another, I mean, bright lights. It's like, I'm, I'm off to a flame, right? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. But it used to get me in trouble because I only have so much time and energy. And inevitably, if I say yes to one thing, and then I say yes to another and yes to another, eventually one or two of those things are probably going to have to give because I'm not going to be able to do my best with, with whatever I'm committing my energy to because I'm trying to split it between multiple things. And so now I really try to get happy around no, <laughs> you know, and be proud of myself to say no. And no, period, is a complete sentence, even though for us Canadians, you know, where we usually follow it with no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, and, and sorry, that's the Canadian thing here. But uh, we seem to apologize every time we have to say no for something. And, it, it, and it, I don't know what it is. It's a cultural guilt or something. But uh, regardless, uh I, I feel for a lot of people because I think a lot of us struggle with that saying no, you know. Yeah, and I, I think it's the, the older you get that you you actually realize how precious time is. And then you yes. and it's the same with I mean, I've had a lot of different businesses, and it's like yes. the time that you keep laser focused and get one running, it's okay, you get it systemized and everything grand, and then move yeah. on to the next. But usually I kind of go, Oh, that's good too, that's good too. And a lot of people have that problem. They're kind of they're yeah. just trying to do as chasing three rabbits, you'll never catch any. That's right. <laughs> it's so true, right? And uh, I mean, how do you filter your yeses and your noes? I'm just really curious, Roy, because you got a lot going on, all right? Lots of podcasts, lots of outputs, right? And yeah. But it's also learning how to guard the inputs at the same time, because those inputs affect the outputs. You know, if we go back to science 101 here, you know, scientific method, it's like, you want to change the results you're getting. Well, you got to look at what you're putting into the equation, right? Well, whatever comes in, it's got to go out. If you don't like what's coming out, Maybe you got to look at what's going in. And, and, and I feel it's that, that ability to see what is in alignment with our values and what we want out of life and business and being able to stick to that. Right. And that's, that's the challenge. I'm curious. Like, do you have some tips around that? I want to hear your position because I mean, geez, you, you seem to have a lot of harmony right now, which is great. I, 
definitely it has to be in alignment with my belief system like i'm working with one guy now he's helping people with anxiety and i know yes. we're going to change a load of lies for that so i have no problem putting the energy into that mm -hmm. i'm never intending that's promoting gambling or anything like that mm -hmm. i'll keep away even if they approach me about doing something you know i've had massive opportunities that could have been very lucrative and it's like mm -hmm. no because do i want my family to see me doing this it's not about the money and like but i i believe that when you put the effort in the right direction i don't know is it just the love you get from it the the, the feel good factor how you know i'm doing right for the world you just you don't have it's i don't know is it a karma thing or what yeah. but just life yeah. seems to be very good and i think do the right things and the right things happen to you oh but how do we figure out what are the right things, right? Like, I think sometimes Well, it used to be my is... mom. My mom would tell me, <laughs> I told you. She, she, her intuition, she'd say, I told you I didn't trust him. I could be, for example, I, I've had a lot of businesses that just didn't go. I, I know a guy five yeah. years. I get into business and my mom said, I don't trust him. And I, I know him. He's grand. He's grand. And next he chaffed oh. me or he tried to form another company and cook me up. And you're going, what? And it's like, every time she's... So now it's like, no, I just take a step back and I go, what am I bringing to the table? And it's yeah. kind of, you have to kind of let people know as well. Like if you are going into a partnership, because what I love about you actually mm. is like you're dating your wife and it's the same thing in a business relationship yeah. as well. Because people, when they're dating, it's like, oh, the flowers and oh, let's go to the cinema. Yeah, then they get married and it's like, hmm, they don't need, look, most people don't even acknowledge each other, which is disgusting. Yeah. Like, And the yeah. fact that you say you're dating your wife, I know that you get it. You know, you want the closeness and that's what makes it the spark and it's the same in any business relationship like you just kind of you have these conversations you don't let it fester you don't let it build up and then just go yes. wow you just go <laughs> come here you kind of said you were going to do this and it's not really happening or whatever or even if you make a mistake yourself you just put up your hand you go look this was my plan this happened apologies next week is grand and people accept that but unfortunately most yeah. people don't do that they just kind of yeah. they go off on on a tangent and explode it, it's so true it, i think you said that so well but i also like the fact that uh i was raised by my mom i can relate to the uh, the comment you made <laughs> about trust what mom says or intuition right the motherly intuition but it, it, it's it's important once you know those belief systems to honor them and, and it, what i heard there is that you've really learned how to honor them they're like it sounds like a non-negotiable for you as well which is i think so important for all of us you know it's like when you really have a strong belief and I mean, it, it's like unwavering belief, whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. If you believe it to be true, it's true to you, you know? Um, and I think that clarity builds confidence. And when we feel confident, we tend to procrastinate less and take more decisive action with greater intentions, you know? And, and I think that's what we're all looking for, really. You know, I be honest, like the last week I've been sick and, you know, I have an autoimmune condition and it, it doesn't bug me all the time, but every once in a while I get sick and I'm like laid out and I was almost in bed for a week. It's awful. But I found myself consumed by screen time because I just didn't have the energy to do anything else, but it was so easy. You know what I mean? It was just easy. Just put on the Netflix or something else and just let it go and just lie there. And, and I get it. It, it, it. I can see how that is so hard to break free from, right? Like, I, I, so it's, I share this only because I, the struggle's real. I think we all deal with it, but it's like, how do we work through it rather than try to avoid it? Because I think it's the avoidance piece, you know, to your point, when we don't connect, well, we're missing out on the opportunities to create the harmony, create better connection, create better understanding, respect, trust, you know? But that's also where vulnerability comes in. And that's not an easy skill to develop. You know, most of us as men, especially, let's just say it's a muscle that's very underdeveloped for us. You know, statistically speaking, I'm not speaking for all men, of course, but I can honestly put myself in that bucket many, many years ago. And it's what created a lot of my problems was I didn't know how to connect to people, you know, and especially my spouse, my partner, you know, in life and my, my mother, my kids, you know, and my, the woman I want to be with till the day I die, like, and, and we were missing and lacking a lot of deeper connection and understanding. And it was on me for that because I didn't know how to communicate. That's why I love this podcast and the theme and the speaking, because speaking is all about communication and understanding connection. You know, it's remarkable. It's really remarkable. So another thing that, because one thing is I'm constantly kind of learning and everything. And yeah. this, 
this kind of relates to business as well as you've been on mm -hmm. over 300 podcasts. What the guy that I'm working with, yeah. he, if somebody kind of flakes or turns up 10 minutes late on the podcast or just doesn't turn up and then they just give a flaky email, I used normally mm -hmm. kind of go, all right, yes, reschedule and everything. But I'm after learning from him. I don't tolerate that anymore because it is an icky feeling. And it's like, yeah. they're not respecting me or someone cancels 10, less than 10 minutes. Oh, I'm sick today. You're not sick 10 minutes before we do our call. And I think <laughs> in the world, we're gone to a stage where people aren't respecting each other for their time. Mm. And mm. I think once you kind of put it out there, I know it can work backwards. Like if, if you yeah. really vent on a guy and say, listen, this isn't good. You're, they're not going to get you back. Sometimes you kind of have yeah. to play it cool. But the reality yes. is like when people are say coming on your show and they don't even turn up or whatever. And I mean, I've, yeah. especially the crypto for some reason, like the, there's been a few times they were like treat to like I would normally go, okay, let's reschedule. Like if it's sickness, they're the illest people in the world, the people working yeah. in the crypto. Because there's like, there's always a sickness, then there's a meeting. And I used to always just kind of reschedule and reschedule. But no, I like, I don't tolerate it. And I'm just wondering, would you in podcasts that you've been on, because I'm sure a lot of them have flaked on you, and also in business. What's your thoughts on that one? Oh, that's a really good one. Because I know when I was younger, <laughs> I, uh, well, let's just say that, that expression, young, dumb, and full of something. Well, I, I was certainly one of those individuals, you know, I, I thought I was much wiser than I was. And I was impatient. And I wanted things now. And uh I, it's so funny saying this. Like it's just like man, it was only twenty years ago. It's not like it was forever ago, but it, it was like two kids ago for sure. Two kids ago, you know. And and where I am today, definitely, I have a lot more patience and understanding. And I always give people one chance. Now I know that can be a detriment to me sometimes because you know you give somebody a chance and well they might blow it again, but that's on them. You know, and then after that, I'm, I'm, and I hate to say it, but it's almost like a quote from The Godfather. You're dead to me. <laughs> you know, Vito, you're dead to me, right? Like, <laughs> I'm a movie buff too, but, um, you know, like it's, it's, it's like that moment. Like, if you, you, you burn me once, okay, shame on me. Burn me twice, well, forget you, you know, <laughs> like it's, um, and I think that's sort of the stance I take now. Um, because I, I can relate to the being sick piece, you know, and, and there has been some last minute cancellations, but I'm like, ah, it's okay. I, I I've got plenty of other things I can be doing right now with that time that I've just got back, you know, but if it's a pattern and it happens more than once, then we have to ask yourself, is this a habit? You know, and, and I had a great mentor that said that, you know, if you, cause it was something that I would do, you know, my old business and, um, you know, I was managing lots of people. I'm a young manager, you know, managing guys that are older than me that are a bit more senior in the, the, the company than I am, you know, or at least in the industry. And, uh, what was it that I did? I just know that I kept making the same sort of excuse, let's just say. And it, it was around follow-ups when I was really young, you know, cause I was always like, okay, well, close the deal, I'm working on the next one didn't really appreciate the follow-up. You know, how are you doing? How's things working out for you? What else can I help you with? Or, or even to ask like, hey, do you have any friends that are looking for any equipment? I'd love to connect with them, give them a tour. You know, like, but that was not on my radar. I was always like, next, next, next. And, um, you know, he, he called me out. He goes, you know, and I was just like, no, no, I, I do it sometimes when I think it's worth it. You know, and he's like challenging me on this, right? And uh, <laughs> it was on those coaching mentor relationships and, and also we knew each other well enough that he could be stern with me, you know, and I was okay with that. I'm okay with it, you know, and uh, I think it was because my father was the opposite. You know, my father was very introverted, also was very stoic, wouldn't really express emotions very, very much. Um, anger, every once in a while, but my dad had to be really red hot to, to express like anger. And uh, I always knew if my dad got angry at me, watch out because we really screwed up, <laughs> you know, and, um, but I remember him and tell me, you know, he's like, die, if this isn't just an excuse because I've heard you say this more than once now. This sounds like it's a habit for you. And is this habit showing up anywhere else in your life right now? And I was like, I, don't, I mean, I was full of piss and vinegar. I was pissed off when he said this, right? I was like, Rrr. and, and so I had to go cool off. Right. Um, and think about it. And I was like, geez, he's right. That's why I'm so pissed off. <laughs> you know? And, um, and ever since then, I, I, I think I want to give people a, a chance, of course, because I've been given chances as well. So there's that sort of warm fondness to that. Like I was given that. So I want to do unto others as I've been done. And, you know, it's worked out pretty well. But 
I'm not afraid to ask people point blank, you know, like, is this something that happens to you regularly? Why do you think that is, you know, and just hear what they have to say. And if I believe that they're being honest and transparent with me, great. If they're trying to just pull something over my, my eyes or, or, you know, maybe sort of deflect the uncomfortableness of the conversation. I have to ask myself, was well, this worth my time? And, and that's a hard thing to say, because I, I want to help people, you know, that's a big part of why I'm on this planet, I believe. And, and in those moments, I, I kind of feel guilty, <laughs> you know, so I think I, I need to be able to gain your wisdom a little bit more, Roy, because it sounds like you're at that place now where it's like, now, yeah, I can tell you, I, I know my mom's thinking about you right now. So uh, no, <laughs> we're out of here. Um, and, and it sounds like you've really fine tuned that intuition piece. I, I, I think I still need to develop mine, you know? So getting a business to eight figures, a, a lot of spire to even get to, you know, six a figures. Uh, let's, just, so. let's just say a mentor, I, a coaching and mentorship, having somebody that's able to ask you the hard questions and call you out on your own BS. That is what allowed our company to be successful, really. Uh, and we had great people, really good people, even though I sometimes would screw things up, you know, just again, when I was young, you know, I get my emotions would get the better of me. And I think that's something with most of us entrepreneurs, especially early on in that entrepreneurial journey. It, I mean, we're trying to learn so much all at once. We're handling all those external and internal pressures. I didn't have the resources to deal with it. You know, I really didn't. But thankfully, I had a partner that was 20 years my senior. He'd done this a few times before. And so he was the voice of reason, you know. Good. So I know that. I mean, I've heard a lot of people over the years. And yeah. I know that what I used to as well is kind of I'd go you know, you'd have the interview, you get the CV or whatever, but I'd always like to take them to a restaurant and just see how they are with the waiters and everything. I just kind of watch everything because they could be nice and friendly to me and I just see yeah. they're cocky and it's like, okay, there's, and i just curious with the businesses that you've been involved in, what kind of hiring strategies that you've uh, That is a great, uh, you know, that's so interesting that you say that because I, I would do that um, when I was trying to recruit, you know, new salespeople into our company, right? And uh, I would often connect with guys around my age, you know, that's just what it was, people in my networks and getting introductions. But I would often meet in a restaurant or a restaurant type format, you know, and, and back in my early days, I'd, we'd share a lot of drinks. And if we could have a nice fun time, I'd be like, I want to bring this guy on because I could party with him. Now, that was sort of my early days, my young and naive uh, when it came to business. But you know, as I matured, I, I found that that practice was great, but it got much better when I didn't have any alcohol involved. But all because then I could see how people do engage with one another, you know, how do they converse? And is there more than just a business relationship here? I, I found that that was important to me. I wanted to know that people had a life outside of work. You know, I wanted to know that they had passions. I mean, I, 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 it'd be foolish of me to ever expect somebody to be there forever, you know, and I knew that, but I knew that for the time that you're there, I, I hopefully you give your best. I mean, it's a performance-based pay program. So, you know, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. And I want you to get as much as possible because that means we do really well as a company too. It's a win-win situation. Plus the client's going to be looked after really well. So they win as well. And, and I find that, that it's that personal connection was the piece that really I, I loved you know, and, and I know that was also detrimental to me in, in some of the earlier days because I had too close of a relationship to the to to their teams, you know, but I didn't know how to differentiate the two. And uh, now where I'm at, I, I, I am much better at getting a read on people for sure. You know, and I think it's because I'm not in party mode anymore. I'm not I'm not living by my ego anymore, you know, and uh, and I think that really helped. And I think that's important for any of us young entrepreneurs that are just getting into business, scaling. It's sometimes we have to check ourselves at the door, you know, just, just, hey, what, what's our intention with this? Because we're talking to real people here, you know, they're people with their own experiences and their own knowledge and their own wisdom to this point in time. And it's, are they an asset? Will they see this as something that they really want to do? Or are they just doing it to kill time, fill space or make my you know, job offer a stepping stone. And that was a big struggle with us being in retail. Not a lot of people look at retail as a career path. And, uh, and so that was a struggle in the hiring process. So I found that that additional step of developing the relationship was a much more comfortable way for me to sort of onboard the right types of people into the business. It created a bit of a gap, you know, or a buffer, I guess. Okay. Excellent. Well, I want to touch on the podcasting because 
the reason why <laughs> I was saying because no, you're starting your podcast and yeah, why it's different because I I go on a lot of shows as well and it's a lot different yeah. because when you go on the show, it's you're bringing your knowledge with you. Yeah, you can yes. look at the show and just to spend a bit of time just kind of seeing what's going mm. on. But when you're interviewing somebody. You're spending the time kind of finding out who they are, looking at their social yes. media, kind of watching a few videos, whatever it is. And yeah. with your plans, what's your plans for your own show, you might tell us, but also what you've learned from being on 300 shows. Oh, well, I, I've learned a lot of what I like to believe are best practices, you know, and when I say that, it, it, to me, it actually just it's, it seems like common sense. You know, uh, that, that little adage, you know, training people like you want to be treated. And I mean, it, it's very karmic <laughs> for one thing. I mean, I, I do believe that we get what we deserve and, and uh, you put good energy out and good energy is going to come back. And I always ask myself, how would I like to be experiencing this? And, and that's been the one fortunate thing about being on so many other podcasts before actually venturing down the path of doing my own was, you know, I really appreciate that intake process. You know, like the scheduling, is it easy? Is it automated? You know, nice calendar invite, is it easy to find the links? Even is there some references and easy to find information about them? Like I, I will always go to their socials as well, right? At least that's usually what I try to do. And to try to get a better understanding of what's the point, you know, like what, what, why do I actually feel that I'd be a good guest, you know? And can we have a great conversation and a good connection? Because I don't want to be a one and done kind of guy, you know? <laughs> I, I like developing relationships and connections. And uh, I, I find that that's actually the things that bring me the greatest value today, you know, is, is that connection and just connecting with other people and, and, and trying to help one another, you know, as they say, a rising tide raises all ships. Well, let the, let the floodgates open, you know, let's, let's raise those tides together. And uh, so I, I found that some situations though, uh, were people that weren't very good communicators. I've been on a few podcasts where it felt very forced, very scripted. That doesn't work for me. You know, just, it, it doesn't, I don't know about you, Roy, but I, I find the scripting really challenging. Like a set, I, I don't even ask people to send me questions. Now they might ask me a couple of questions like, Hey, is there any questions you want me to start with those or open up with? And, and I'll, I might give a few ideas, but I'm like, Hey, I'm open to anything. I just want to have a great conversation. That's it. You know? And, and, because I want to take the pressure off too, not only for myself, but also for them. And, uh, and I found that that that's been a format that doesn't resonate with me. And I, and I mean, with your experience, like what is your thoughts on the whole scripting and preset questions? Cause I know there's, there's individuals like John Lee Dumas, right? Like same questions, same format for, I don't even know how many thousands of episodes. Tim now, Ferris, right? I think it does the same. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, so I, I don't know, like, what are your thoughts on that? So first of all, the Polish one was never a plan to start a Polish podcast. I wanted to improve my own Polish. And when I was listening to Polish podcasts, they were scripted or else they were only in Polish. And I was like, this is terrible. I want to do this just natural conversation. And hence why I, I told you prior to recording, it's got over 2 million yeah. you know, views between audio and, and wow. video. And like people would write to me and go, send me the questions. I say, I don't do that. You know, yeah. it's like, and... I've even, there's, there's a guy, uh, uh, Rohan Alawala, he's helping people in Pakistan to kind of try to earn between 500 and $1,000. So I go on show, even with a 13 year old, some of them are 10 times better than some of the shows that I've been on. But even yeah. if some of them send me the questions, I don't read them. I just go, I want to come that, and they ask incredible questions. And I think, yeah, does th people ask me, and I know it's more their anxiety because they don't mm. want to, it's all about the fear of kind of coming across you. But, but I tell people straight away, I says, I'm never out to, to attack you. Right? I'm yes. never out to yeah. trick you or anything. That's not good for anyone. Yeah, there is journalists that do that kind of thing. There is yes. podcasters that do that. Right. But if you do your own research, you can check it and you go, is this my yeah. style? Like I went on one the other day, the guy is doing a podcast on uh, like who wants to be a millionaire. And I just thought, this is interesting. And he has it really set up well. <laughs> The questions I had no clue. Like it was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I asked my friends. Like I asked a lot of them afterwards. I gave them the same questions, and none of them could answer them either. But I didn't care. But then he had a decent interview, and it was like, but I had I had listened to it and checked it, and I thought grand. But it was a fair of yeah. mine. Oh my god, what if I can't answer? I think I got to level ah. four, four or something like that. But I think once you do your own homework, and if you are nervous, like 
just relax. The thing, the thing is, try to come on 10 minutes early and say, can we come on earlier? Because yes. like we had a good chat before we started recording and you right. could just see sure. the energy, like you just kind of go, oh yeah, I, 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 I could go for a bear with you kind of thing, you know? And just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, but some people don't, some people take about five minutes to warm up. And if that's your case, just yeah. kind of say to people, look, is it okay if we just kind of go on a few minutes earlier? And just once you do more, you'll actually be comfortable. And what I say to people as well is if you really, even for people starting, because sometimes people have a fear, there's, there's thousands of people in Pakistan that are looking for guests that do live right. shows for 30 minutes. And if you're going to be making your mistakes, do it there. They're happy. They're getting to, yeah. to meet you. And, and also, yeah, as as per your question scripting, no, I'd say leave, leave it at the door. <laughs> I don't get why Dumas and the other guys do it. Not, not my style. It's uh, good to hear that. Thank you. Because I, I do find it really challenging at times. I mean, I, I understand it. it. I do appreciate the anxiety comment you made. You know, I'm someone that's dealt with anxiety most of my life. And, uh, you know, I, I've got lots of ways that I manage it, but it can sometimes still get the better of me, you know? And, and so I can appreciate the the calmness that comes with that predictability, you know? Um, but for me, uh, I, I'm more of a conversationalist. Like, I want to have a conversation. You know, like, and and we'll see where it goes, right? Like, I, I like that sort of um, that exploration through a conversation, right? But but I do also appreciate that there's a theme, and I think that needs to be really clear. And that's really was I think the biggest part for me deciding to finally do a podcast was trying to narrow what the heck am I going to talk about? I like talking about all sorts of stuff, <laughs> you know. And I found that that was the hard part. It was like, how do you niche down, right? And how do you get really clear with the theme, and, and create a platform around that theme? Right. And uh, and I definitely took some time around that part, you know, just talking to some of the people in my audience, sending out some surveys, some questions like poll questions on Instagram, you know, and just even looking at my own analytics, like what are some of my best performing content on my website, you know, and and I found that that's what sort of gave me some confirmation, but also some confidence that, OK, this is the direction I'm going to go. You know, it's also sort of in theme with what my book was about a number of years ago when that was published. So there was like. A nice little molding. That's why it's called the 2% solution is I'm a big believer in, in compound effect, right? I mean, Darren Hardy's book is fantastic. It really yeah. goes deep on that. And there's lots of other things like atomic habits and uh, morning rituals. You know, there's lots of great examples of these micro commitments and the impact it can make in our lives because it's consistency and frequency, right? And if we do things enough and we're consistent with that commitment, it's amazing that change happens, right? And uh, my book's all around that, how to leverage 2% of every 24 hours. And I know you're doing the math right now. That's 30 minutes a day. <laughs> I know everyone, I was thinking, I was like, what is 2% of 24 hours? Well, it's 30 minutes. Um, but if you leverage that 30 minutes effectively and you do it every day, it's amazing the sh shifts that you can see in physically, emotionally, spiritually, as, as well as uh, all the other components that make us just good people, you know? And, uh, and so that's sort of the theme I finally landed on was just interviewing people that do amazing things, but ask them like, what would be the best practice that you've been most consistent with in your life? You know, that's created the opportunity to be where you're at now. Cause there, there's, it's there, right? The secret sauce is there. <laughs> I think about a lot of things that I've done. I just, I would look for examples of people that have already done it. You know, the guy that's already standing on the top of the mountain. I'm like, well, how the hell did you get up there? Which route did you take? You know, like, just tell me, a rope tell and me. pull me up there. So I yeah, got up the climb. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> for safety, for sure. But, but, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing just the amount of examples we have access to today. You know, like just your podcast, the guests that you bring on, right? All wonderful examples of just different ways of doing things. I mean, Anybody that says, I don't know what to do or I don't know how to do it. It's like, oh, we're living in an economy where you have access to the information to figure that stuff out. You can hire people to help you with the how-to stuff, you know? Like, but the thing that you really got to figure out is like, why the hell are you doing it? <laughs> you know, like, why, why do you feel this is such a big need for you right now? And, and I think we skirt over the why sometimes, don't we? You know, I, I think we just sort of pass it over and we just dive right into the what's and the how's and the when's and the, you know, where to's and, but why do we get started? You know, that's why I, you know, when we started our conversation, I was like, why, why, why podcasting? Right. Like, cause I'm always fascinated to hear people's origin story. I love origin stories. I, I'm, I'm a big comic book buff as well. Okay. I'm a comic book collector. And uh, so I love those origin stories of how, you know, they went from somebody, you know, like the, uh, remember the old Atlas, um, 
ads in the 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 old bodybuilding magazines you know the mr atlas ads you see this skinny guy on the beach and the big guy kicking sand on his face right and next thing you know you read next page over well he bought so-and-so joe weeder's workout program and now he's a big buff guy and he's kicking sand in the big guy's face right like but it's that underdog story right that that hero journey i mean it's just so awesome you know so awesome and uh Anyways, I, I start to ramble. So there we go. Oh, right. <laughs> you, you mentioned uh, Darren Hardy because I, I've read, I've read yeah. his book, The Compound Effect. But I actually went to um, a high performance form twice, actually, in uh, California no with him for three days. Wow. Like, and I still have this his awesome. notes that he get up. Or, like, I mean, yeah. you could, like I haven't done them because you can apply them to any business. But like yeah. in your own, I mean, you mentioned mentors, but like because some yeah. people think, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing like whether yeah. you're watching, listening to other podcasts or reading books and stuff like that? I think continuous improvement is very yes. important in order to be successful. And just like to hear your thoughts on that one. Well, I I think that's a great, well, a, a, an important thing to mention, you know, because early on in life, I was especially like in my 20s when I started venturing down this sort of entrepreneurial path, right? Like, wanting to develop myself as a salesperson and then also working really quickly into management and then wanting to understand the operations. Like I just, I was hungry to learn. And so I went all in with professional development. Any business book, I mean, I was picking it up, I was devouring it. I was listening to audio, audible, like audio books, you know, when I was working out on the, at the gym, you know, going for hikes. Like it was just professional development, professional development, professional development. And I didn't really focus or ask myself, do I want to develop myself personally as well? Because I believe that the professional development was enough, that it would touch on all the personal development as well. But what I started to realize was a lot of those are external facing. You know, they do talk about the mindset piece at times, but a lot of them are very action orientated. A lot of these professional development books, they just are, they give you a, a process, right? And then you just got to follow the process and see if you get certain results. And I admired that. I liked it. I liked that format. It helped me. But I was ignoring doing any personal development and looking inner inside. You know, like as I mentioned, you know, I, I, I from a, early on in childhood as an obese kid, I dealt with a lot of insecurities, a lot of issues. You know, just internally mental health challenges that came with that state of unhealth for years and the bullying that accompanied it. And, you know, even when I made those changes, got healthy, got fit, you know, developed a new social surrounding, had a new sort of perspective on my life, I still felt like that kid inside. And that sort of perpetuated into my 20s and even into my early 30s, where I was looking to alcohol to escape those negative feelings I had about myself. And I believe people enjoyed hanging out with me when I was the drinking version of me. You know, I was fun guy die, as they would often refer to. I'd get invited to go party because I was fun. I had a, Everyone had a great time. I had a good time. I wasn't a, a downer drunk. I wasn't an aggressive drunk. I was a fun guy. I just wanted to have fun. I wanted everybody laughing. And uh, I believe that everybody preferred that version of me. And they respected me professionally, for sure. But on the personal side, there was a lot to be developed. And uh, I didn't come to that naturally. It wasn't until I was about 33. I said, you know what, maybe, what if I went opposite. What if I put the professional development down? I mean, I know enough professionally now. I don't really need to keep developing myself on that. What if I just look at figuring out what's going on inside for me right now? Figuring out who am I? What do I really want? But more importantly, why do I want that? You know, what is my values? What are my beliefs? And why do I have those beliefs? Where do those come from? I, those questions aren't easy to answer. They take time. They take energy. They take reflection, introspection. I mean, and fortunately for me, I found someone that helped me navigate that because I didn't know how to have to get started. I was looking at books, but I was like, geez, everyone's saying something different, yet similar. They're all talking about mindset this, mindset that. I'm like, well, geez, I, I get that. I get that. I've done a lot of mindset development professionally, but I don't understand how to do this for myself personally. And so I found a, a wonderful therapist. I also found a psychologist. I didn't work with them forever. It was about six months between the two of them, but it was enough to give me confidence and clarity. So I knew what path I was going to follow now to continue to develop myself into the person I always knew I wanted to be, but I didn't know how to get there. And, and so that's sort of my thoughts on the personal and professional. I, I don't think you can really prioritize one over the other. There might be seasons in our lives where we do, but we have to understand that it's all connected. 
you know, it all is. Everything's connected. Anything I'm a part of, I can I'm connected with. You know, you know, emotionally, physically, <laughs> spiritually, physically, uh, and and I have to really understand my position in that role, if you will. And the only way to do that is you have to first understand yourself. You know, and uh, now I'm getting into like the Eastern philosophies, of course, but it, it, you know, know thyself, right? Uh, it, it, but it, it is. It seems like we kind of laugh about it. It's almost like a cliche. We hear it so often now, but. But what are people don't you see, like, like I love yeah. listening to you that you kind of yeah. were kind of aware of like your downfalls, your weaknesses, or whatever they be. And you walked like I remember, like for example, when I had my child first, I was reading books on how to be a better father yeah. and everything. Like the anger. Yeah. I mean, I was I'm always mm. kind of calm, but it would like build up, build up, and then I'd snap. And I was like, I don't like that side of me. I'm not in control when that happened. And I started reading Dalai Lama and anger, or different oh, yeah. books, and I, and I was like, you know. You get bulletproof. It doesn't mean that you won't have the odd right. moment that somebody really right. kind of, but you're like a hundred times better than the older version. And it's just a case of being conscious of constantly trying to be a better, better version of yourself, which in turn, yes. you being a father, you know, your children are looking at you and they kind of, you know, you can't go to them, hey, you should read this because they will just kind of slap it off your head. Like, but I mean, the reality is when they see you being in control and not losing the plot or somebody cuts you off in the traffic that you're like, hey, Maybe there's something going on bad in their life. Just kind of, you know, exactly. let it be. Empathy is so powerful, right? It's so powerful, but it's often, well, at least an emotion that I think sometimes is underdeveloped, right? It's like, do we ever try to think about what that other person might be experiencing in that moment to react the way they did, to act the way they did, you know? And and why did I react the way I did to that? You know, like, and sometimes I'm good at that, but I'll admit it. I mean, sometimes I'm not, you know, like I, I it's hard to override you know, something that was part of me for 33 years, even though I'm 14, almost 15 years removed from that time in my life, there's moments where it still, it shows up, you know, cause it, it was, it was, it's just part of who I was part of my DNA. And, and just to change that overnight, it, it would be unrealistic to think that, you know, and, and, and I think that sometimes is, you know, we can't help it. We see a lot of these marketing type offers, right? It's like change your life in 30 days. And well, you may, start the process but <laughs> i've never heard of you know complete overhaul 180 in 30 days right but but we can change our mindset and our, our our relationship to our lives and the things that we do in our lives very quickly if we're ready right if we're ready for it because we're not ready for it oh geez it's it's going to be really challenging plus it in my experience has created a lot more guilt shame and blame for myself because i constantly think i'm a failure here i am start stop start stop start stop right start again. And it's like, Oh my gosh, how many times do I have to go through this? And, uh, and that's hard. It's just hard, but it's not impossible. And uh, if there's anything I can offer that gives a little bit of, of inspiration to this, it's, I, I know there's a, a number of neuroscientists that really speak to this around habits and habit formation. Our brains are malleable. They've been able to prove through science. We can override past behaviors and habits with new ones that we want to replace them with, but it takes time, but it is possible. And the two ways that we all learn most effectively is through two modes, mentorship and modeling. That's it. Think about all the things that you've learned in your life. I bet you those two were very prominent in the, that learning period, that growth period. You know, we model other things that we see, we touch, we read, we hear, you know, and then if we have a good mentor, someone that's already maybe done that or a few steps ahead on the same thing that we're trying to now learn, they can offer us a lot of guidance. So maybe we're not making the same mistakes they did, or if we do, we can recover from those a little bit more quickly than they did, right? And and so that's really what my thoughts are on that whole thing, you know, is that, listen, believe in yourself because it is possible. And there's going to be days where it feels hard. Yeah, <laughs> it does. But that's good because that's an opportunity for you to prove to yourself that you can do hard things and that you can be okay because you have the resiliency to do it. But you just got to trust yourself, right? And uh, and that, I find, is the, the part that's not as easy. So, so finally, I I was looking at your social media and I was like, it, like even your Instagram, the interactions and everything is like some of them like over a thousand kind of hearts or whatever way you kind of yeah. count, which is very rare. Because I mean, I know that sometimes people are buying uh, like the numbers oh, yeah. and then you just go through their thing and you'll see, yeah, one heart or something. You go, yeah, yeah, you've got a hundred thousand. Yeah. <laughs> And your Pinterest, which 
I've never seen that. And I, like, is it 215, 216 per views per month? Like, that's incredible. So, have you any tips for people on growing and what you find serves you best in the, the social media world? Authenticity. You know, first and foremost, just show up as yourself. Like, it, it, listen, there, there's everybody else out there already doing themselves. You don't need to be them. Like, just be you. And that was the one piece that really has helped me. You know, it, 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 get clear on what your values are and don't be afraid to share what those values are. And also, I took sort of a page from Uta Hagen, you know, the sort of uh, the old acting teacher, right? I, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she was a, a very um, method actor. And uh, I'm not an actor at all but i appreciate you know being someone that does a lot of speaking from stage there's elements of acting that i can draw upon you know and uh, there's there's that whole idea of leaving your emotions at the door right <laughs> you know this idea of sort of whatever is real in your life at that moment set it aside so you can assume whatever that role is that you need to be in that moment and i think we all have that ability you can call it a mask you can call it whatever you will but i think it can be just an extension of who we already are you know and the the big piece was in in theater it's all about showing not telling same with TV and film, right? We, we show, we don't necessarily tell. Like we don't say, oh, she's over there crying her eyes out in the corner. It's like, like she's there sobbing. <laughs> I mean, we don't need to be told that she's crying. We can see that she's crying. And because we learn through modeling and mentorship, I think if people can really adopt a clear understanding of what their values are and show up ex ex as examples of how they live those values, that is a wonderful way to be an extension of a role model for people that are out there. But it also holds yourself accountable to living your values and holding true to those as best we can. Now, again, we're all fallible, okay? We all make mistakes. I have my bad days too, trust me. And I'm not afraid to share those. I'll talk about what I've learned based on that situation. And I'll share that. Here's what I'm experiencing. Here's what I did in that situation. And here's what I'm gonna do moving forward. What are your thoughts on that? Have you dealt with something like this before? What are your suggestions or recommendations? So I invite feedback. You know, I invite engagement. I don't get it all the time. A lot of times people won't comment. They'll probably send me DMs, private message, but they won't necessarily some uh, comment on some of that content publicly because some of it's sensitive, right? We're, we're, <laughs> we're getting vulnerable <laughs> in a very public forum. So I welcome the private messages. And actually most of my engagement comes through DMs. You know, which is great because that's where I can create deeper relationships, connection, and obviously, uh, uh, you know, add more people to my community that I can support. And uh, just by me holding true to what I want to do in my life, you know, and, and I found that when I started doing that, and this is like back in, well, I, I, I read Gary Vaynerchuk's first book, Crush It. That was the first book I read. Now he's come out with a new version of it, which is way better now because he's added all the extra knowledge of over a decade of doing what he does into that. But it was such a wonderful example of a different way of connecting with people through this digital uh, media, you know? And, and his whole thing was this idea about just being you, being true, add value. You know, as he says it, jab, 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 right hook, right? Like give, give, give. Then maybe ask for some feedback. Ask for them to connect with us on social. Ask for them to give us a recommendation on our podcast, right? And uh, and that's been the biggest piece of my social that I've remained consistent with. And, and I think my audience appreciates that. I mean, just last week, I got a message from a guy on LinkedIn asking about potentially working with me, wanting to have a call. I didn't even know he was in my network. We've been connected for like seven years on LinkedIn. He's been reading my content. He never engaged with a single piece, but he's been consuming it. He's been reading it. And I've seen this on other platforms as well. I, I go to a social event. I see somebody I haven't seen for a couple of years. And they're like, oh man, I saw you did this, this, this. And I'm like, what have you been up to? And because I, I don't spend a lot of time consuming content online because I'd rather apply my energy to making content. And, and that's again, another piece that I've set up for myself as this is aligned with my values. So I know it's kind of a longer answer, no, it's, but it's I, I think beautiful. Well, I just think that's the piece because every morning you don't have to think, gosh, what am I going to talk about today? It's just like, well, what are you doing today in your life? I'm sure there's something interesting you're about to do. You're going to learn something today. Why not just share what you're learning? You'll never run out of content, <laughs> you know, never. Because how many people do you hear about like, gosh, what am I going to do content on now? Like, what am I going to, like, I mean, there's all these ads and everyone talking about AI and chat GPT and, and like, I mean, there's no excuse now. I'm not saying that you got to go that route, but believe me, you have plenty of knowledge and wisdom to offer others. Every single person on this planet does because your experience is uniquely yours. And you can only be the one to tell that perspective 
Nobody else can tell that story for you, you know? It's like, you be you, and people will yeah. love it for it. Maybe that's the answer I should have just given you. It would have been done in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> your, your crypt notes, the, the summary notes will be much quicker. <laughs> <laughs> But thank no, you. Listen, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. <laughs> you might let people know where they can find you. Me too. Thank you. Oh, well, the one thing of having a unique name, I'm pretty easy to find. Like, God, just Google my name. You will find me. But if you're on social media, the platforms I'm most active on are LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And it's just my name, Di Manuel, D A I Manuel, M E N U E L. And if you go to diamanuel.com, you know, uh, if you go, depending on when this comes out, my new site should be live, so it should be a, a moot point. But uh, I, just, Roy, I put it out today <laughs> just to annoy you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Plus, you'd be wrong with your site. age as well because you said, "Oh, I'd be." <laughs> well, for anybody that's built a site on WordPress, you know how hard it is to become uh, un untangled from WordPress. I didn't realize it was so tr challenging based on all the plugins I had in my site and all that. Anyways, long and short of it, my website, diamondwell.com, the 1800 articles all geared around supporting people with change, health changes, wealth changes, spiritual changes. I mean, it's just, it, it's a lot of, let's just call it information that can be used to help people navigate change. And of course, if you want to have a conversation around that, ah, just reach out to me. I'm happy to connect. Excellent. Thank you very much. Roy, thank you, man. Thanks for everything that you're doing. And uh, gosh, the day when I'm looking to learn Polish, I know exactly where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations. And thanks for being an example and a wonderful role model with what's possible in podcasting. You're a real inspiration to me. And I'm, I'm so grateful to have been here today. So again, thank you. No problem. So I'll make sure I'm going to put uh, both the audio and the video, your website, but also what I would ask the listeners, because I know they got your energy. They enjoyed what you gave today. So his podcast link will be there. The 2% Solutions, is it? Is the That's name? right. 2% so we'll make, Solutions. So all I ask is that you go in, you follow him, you give him a five-star rating, you give him a review, because at the start, it's very hard to get out of the racetracks and it makes a big difference. So if you could do that from, it would really be appreciated. And also his book, if you get his book, do the same thing, because the more people that give a five-star rating, for people that are actually care about mankind and doing good things in the world, it means Amazon will start show, showing it to more people, which in turn, more people will buy. And like, I, I, just on the book, I know we didn't touch the book, but I just want to say for Fair those enough. that are listening, all I saw was positive reviews. So there's nobody went, oh, I hate this book. They were all positive. <laughs> so so I encourage you to do that. So thank you very much. And you, until you. next week, you'll find all the episodes on speakingpodcast.com. Take care. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, five-star rating, and share with your friends. And you'll find all my shows with the QR code or bio.link forward slash podcaster, as well as my podcast coaching. And I'd like to thank my sponsor, danielpacker.com, helping people with anxiety, stress, and addictions. He's got a 90% success rate, and you only pay if you're successful. Also, if you'd like to go on a podcasting tour, I can help you do that. And if you're interested in sponsorship, you can contact me on my bio.link forward slash podcaster. Until next week, take care.